And the technique is called havening. Have any of you heard of havening? Yes, just only a couple. Yeah, it's, it's a very low profile thing, hasn't been around for very long. And it's simple. You can all do havening to yourself, and I'm going to show you how. And just because it's simple doesn't mean that it's not powerful. And it's an easier thing for me to demonstrate than to uh, explain and talk to you. They say a picture's worth a thousand words. I think a demonstration's probably worth a million words. And so I need somebody to demonstrate this with, and I have that, this person already. It was a person who dropped by my stand this morning, and I was just talking to her because she's an interesting story. Another lady dropped by my stand, by the way, who's also an interesting story because she's just read my book and she's had three bits of great luck in a very short period of time. She's very much looking forward to her um, helicopter, to her balloon trip and a first-class hotel and playing with her three PlayStation 4s. Anyway, but back to, back to this lady who dropped by my stand. She has had a very frightening thing happen to her. And I felt guilty talking to her. It is so frightening that I'm not going to say any more about it because she's in this room and right now uh, some of these feelings will be coming back. And it's something that I hate doing. As a therapist, as a doctor, it's absolutely the opposite of how I want things to be. But sometimes, in, I, I haven't found any way through this. If you recall a memory, you can't deal with it until it is recalled. This lady's name is Ashley. She, I can assure you she's being very brave. It took me quite a bit of convincing and quite a bit of trust on her part to be my demonstration subject. So would you please give us some encouragement, <laughs> Ashley? I'm happy for you to share that um, I was stalked by this guy. Okay. So that gives can I do I say what your job is or not? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Well, Ashley's... Thank you. Uh, you, you just speak into that when I say, but... Uh, um, Ashley works as, uh, in uh, a secure, secure unit for um, criminals with the most serious conditions. And as you can imagine, it's not a very nice environment to be in. And she's been there for 10 years. And the thing, I wasn't going to mention anything at all, but she's just told me that it's okay to tell you a little bit. She was attacked by one of these people and it was terrifying for her. It was, it was a man. And she's dealt with it very well. She's a very strong person, but it's still there. Uh, she gets flashbacks, and a loud male voice can be enough to trigger these emotions. These are fairly typical reactions. And some people would call this post-traumatic stress disorder, and I, I think that it probably is. But I'm more interested in seeing if I can put this thought into a different place so that it can take literally a huge weight off her shoulders. And that's what I'm going to do right now. In fact, I don't think we need the mic, because um, I'm probably, well, I'll, I'll hold it in my hand in case I need to talk to you. But actually, would you hold it for me? Yeah, I might need it again in a minute. OK. I want you to close your eyes. Oh, first of all, I must never, ever forget this. Never, ever forget this. Is it okay if I touch you on your arm like this, okay? I promise my hand will be nowhere near your... <laughs> near your money. <laughs> Good luck with Yeah, that. yeah. Okay. Um, now, as well as being um, a therapist, I'm, I'm also a hypnotherapist. So I use elements of very, very gentle hypnosis. You don't need to do this for the havening technique, but I find that it makes things faster and easier. So close your eyes, Ashley. We're going to go on a little walk. Uh, I'm going to be with you for the first part of the walk. And I don't know whether you like hot places or not, but where I thought we'd go to on some of these air miles that Amanda has won. How about Cairo? Lovely. Yeah, lovely. Going to climb the pyramids, yeah? yeah? There's a couple of problems, though, which I didn't tell her about before she got on the plane. 
First of all, we've gone right at the ho hottest time of the year, and it really is hot. And there's that s sandy wind blowing, which isn't terribly pleasant. The other thing is, I don't think she realized how high a pyramid is, and how high the steps are, and how physically tiring it is to climb those steps. And I certainly didn't mention that I've given her my bag to carry, because I've got a bad back. I couldn't possibly carry it. And because she's a nice, kind person, she agreed. So she's got the rucksack on her bag right now. And it's, it's heavy, isn't it? Yes, it is. She's trying to smile. OK, now let's start our climb. As you go up every step, I want you to count out just in a, in a quiet voice. I want you to count from one and keep going until I tell you to stop. Starting now. And now she's really noticing how big these steps are. And as every step she takes, my word, is my bag heavy? What on earth did Steve put in my bag? And those legs are starting to hurt now. I know ladies don't sweat, but there are limits. OK, stop where you are for a moment, actually. Keep your eyes closed. Because we've come quite a long way, and I know it was fairly difficult. But with your eyes closed, in your mind's eye, just look around and see what you can see. There's a good view from here. You know, you only need to be six inches higher than, an, higher than another person, and you can see right over them. So it is with a the pyramid. There's lots of interesting things to see. But our journey's not finished yet. Let's carry on a little bit more with this bag. And while you weren't looking, I put a couple of other things in, but don't tell her. So off we go again, counting from one. Good. Yeah, that's the way. Yeah, you're getting tired, huh? Tired, tired, tired. OK, stop where you are. Stop where you are. I'm going to do you a favor. The punishment's gone on too, too long. I'm going to take the bag off your shoulders. So off it comes. I put the bag down on the ground. How does that feel? A bit lighter? Yes. Yeah? A bit lighter. Yeah. Up the hill. Up you go. Come on. We're almost at the top. Keep going. Keep counting. Keep counting. One, two. Two. Mm. Three. Mm. Four. This is easier. It's almost fun. OK, stop right there. Again, in your mind's eye. You've got a wonderful view now. Look around, see everything there is to see in this wonderful country. And out of the corner of your eye as you look down, you can see my bag. But it's a lot smaller because it's a lot further away. Yeah. And it looks old, actually. It looks all cobwebby and sandy. Looks quite, quite rubbishy. And uh, it's not very easy to see, actually. It's not only is it small, but it's like out of focus. And you might be guessing by now what's in that bag. Are you guessing, Ashley? <laughs> You're laughing. You, am, I reading your, am I reading your mind right? You know what's in there, don't you? Rubbish. Rubbish. Yeah, tell me a little more about it. What do you think, what particular kind of rubbish might it be? Rubbish from my past. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure that rubbish is the word that I chose, because I told you this, this was a terribly serious incident. And um, it might, rubbish may not be the word, but it's the word that Ashley chose. And I have a feeling that that's a good word for her. Because the point is, Ashley, that we can't change the past. None of us can change the past. I mentioned earlier control. We can change the way we think about stuff. Sometimes we need a little help to do it. And I'm giving you a little help now. Because I've moved this into a different part of your brain. I suppose if I worked long enough, I could make you forget about it entirely. But that wouldn't be the right thing to do. But I definitely want to put it into a different place where it can't hurt you anymore. 
because there are plenty of places where you go where you know you're going to be perfectly safe. Perfectly safe. And just because you hear a man's voice doesn't mean that you're about to be attacked. And you know that, don't you? Yes. Yeah. And when you looked down at that bag that was there, you were laughing, weren't you? Yes. Would you have believed that that was possible? No. I've got the mic for you. Keep your eyes closed. Would you have believed that that was possible? No. No. So what do you think has happened? <laughs> I don't know, but it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And, and I told you I felt guilty when I was talking to you, because I did. Because I, I, you know, bullied is too strong a word. But I, I didn't want you to leave here. I didn't want you to leave this building without letting me spend a few minutes with you. And by coming up here, we've done that. But you've also shown the other people in this room a technique that in a moment they can start to use. But I think you've demonstrated how powerful that is. I asked you on a score of 0 to 10 earlier this morning what it was, and you went straight to 10. You didn't yes. need to do any mental arithmetic, did you? No. No. Where would you put it now? One. One. Yeah. Well, keep in, keep in touch with me, but I'm thrilled with that. And I'm thank you for being so brave and being so generous. Please have a seat and give her a warm hand, please. Well done. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, you never know how a demonstration is going to work out. I'd love to be able to tell you that Havening is 100%, but that nothing ever is. But it's really good for, really for post-traumatic stress. And don't take my word for it. Uh, the SAS are using it. It's being used with Gulf War veterans. It's being used in schools. It's, it's being used in prisons. And I think you're going to see a massive increase in the use of it. Paul McKenna describes it as um, the best therapeutic tool in 25 years. He normally has a tendency, you know, to talk big about stuff, big numbers. I think it's more than that. I think it's 125 years because psychiatry doesn't, not deservedly, it doesn't deserve it, but it's been considered a specialty that hasn't had the focus and attention and resources it should have done. There have been advances in mental health. There have been new drugs that sometimes help. There's been CBT, which has been proven to be of benefit. But I haven't seen anything as profound as, uh, as, as Havening for this.